Welcome to Fatal Fat Fridays, where we flex our brains and talk about diet culture on Fridays. My name is Brittany Howard, and I'm a blunt dietitian and an ex-dieter, and I'm here to talk to you about the dangers of dieting. Diet culture has become a staple in our society because we've been conditioned and sold to believe that if we lose weight and we are thin, that it would equal health. Spoiler alert, that's false. So let's fire up our metabolisms in our brains and let's get into it and learn about a fad diet today. Today, we're traveling back in time to an era where we were just cave people and we were hunting and gathering and we were going all around. Mm. So this diet suggests that if you're eating all of these different fresh fruits and vegetables and having the protein to go with it, that your body will have better control of the blood glucose levels which will prevent type 2 diabetes and also metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of risk factors that de potentially develop into heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Diet consists heavily of fresh fruits and vegetables. In addition, there are protein sources allowed, such as fish and shellfish, also grass-fed meats, and poultry and eggs. You can also eat nuts on this diet and specific oils. So on the one hand, this diet includes fresh fruits and vegetables and adequate protein and a couple other things, but it does also restrict some things that we know are also important for our health and important to supply us with nutrients in today's diet. So as it's saying that you can do a lot of these things, it's also saying restrict some things, which makes it a fad diet. So that sounds good because you're getting your fresh fruits and vegetables, you're getting some protein sources, you're getting a little bit of healthy fats. Cool. So what is not included in this type of diet? So this diet avoids processed foods, it avoids refined sugars, it also removes grains like whole wheat, oats, and barley. It also removes lentils and legumes, so you can't have peanut butter, beans, peas, and lentils. You also can't have certain vegetable oils, just you're only allowed specific oils in the other category. I actually really enjoyed going through the paleo website because you can tell that the team is passionate about this and it does promote some things like eating fresh fruits and vegetables. I'm all for that, all for that here. But it's kind of funny because they also have something on their website about people who are trying to debunk their diet, saying that this diet is the way that we should be eating and the way that we were eating back then to eliminate disease. And then you have this highlight that they have of someone who did a TED talk, Christina Wariner, who's an archeological researcher that tried to debunk three myths specifically of the paleo diet. So the three myths that she tried to debunk was that back in the day that we ate a lot of meat and we should do that now. Two, that we did not eat any whole grains or legumes at all. And then three, that we ate, or that the foods on the fad diet now are foods that we ate back as cave people and that the foods are the same. So respect to the paleo people, I think they understand that diets need flexibility in order to be maintained because I have a section on there about 85-15, which is this principle that you would be on the paleo diet 85% of the time, right? And then 15% of the time, you'd be able to do what other diets do, allow you to navigate away from the diet for a little while, have a cheat day, have some time period where you're on vacation and you're not worried about specific foods and things like this. So I think they recognize that with restriction of these certain type of foods, our bodies are gonna crave those type of foods. Our bodies want those type of nutrients. Our bodies are programmed for some of those nutrients. And if you follow the dietary guidelines or look at them, whole grains are a staple of it because of what they provide as far as folic acid and enriched nutrients that we throw in there, as well as the fiber, because fiber, fiber is important to really make sure that you poop regularly. And my friends know, I know we haven't gotten into it yet because we're just starting these episodes and I'm kind of getting a feel of how I want them to be, but I love to talk about shit. Like, anything shit like that is my dream I would love to talk to everybody about different ways that they're pooping what's causing it what's not oh I love it it actually kind of interesting to re to research what happened um you know what the poop looked like back in the paleolithic day but let's talk about the food I can imagine that if we were saying that we didn't consume that type of I know we're consuming fresh fruits and veggies but the level in which they consume fresh fruits and veggies, think about how many berries and stuff you would need to eat in order to have all that fiber, at least nowadays, to make sure that your poop's solid and make sure that it's going through with the soluble and insoluble fiber and making sure it's doing everything it's supposed to do because you get different things from different types of foods. So in general, when you cut out a big food group like that, it's really concerning 
um, as far as nutrition and nutrient intake and how that overall impacts your body. So yes, I'm here for all the fruits and vegetables and the more natural foods and eliminate, eliminating some of the processed foods and refined sugars. But in our day and age and in our society, you are gonna eventually, you're eventually gonna encounter those. And when you go out to eat, some of those things are gonna be in your foods. And in order to have a lifestyle where you're not socially isolated and you're gonna be around friends and go and be social environments, they recognize that that way of eating is not fully sustainable. So if you're not doing that, how can you research that to say that this specific way is causing all these health, uh, health related things because you're really allowing balance over time. So I think it's kind of funny because you're not fully paleo if you're doing the 85-15, yet they still say that you can do this 85% of the time and get the benefits, which I mean, that makes sense because you're eating fresh fruits and vegetables and protein and some things like that. And you're limiting some of the processed foods and refined grains. So why wouldn't you just do that all the time rather than labeling things good and bad? I also want to apologize if you hear all the panting in the background from my dogs, because this is one of their bones and definitely you can tell that I am a snack. So they are excited and waiting for this when the videos are over. Our society, because of diet culture, is trying to sell us that there's one specific best way to eat. And although everybody's bodies are different, we may find one in one of these specific diets that is our best way to eat. But ultimately, if we decide to not restrict certain things and learn and go back to our bodies and listen to our hunger and fullness cues, when our bodies are telling us our, we're hungry, when we may need specifically more carbohydrates for energy, or when we may need a little bit less, we need to start going back to that. Rather than letting somebody say, this is specifically a way of eating, try to follow it and see if it works for you because all that stuff hasn't been studied. Everybody's body's different. We crave different foods. We have different food choices. So we really need to get back to that rather than just following all of these specific suggestions and meal plans blindly. Last thing about paleo, I recognize that they put research on their website and they typically go out there to try to correct anything that somebody may say doesn't fit in with their diet. So that way it's still in the forefront of people's minds. But I think it's kind of also humorous that if you actually link and go visit the studies that they're linked to on their website, there's a couple that even one as early as 2019 says that there's no long-term studies on this. So to take caution when eating with this type of diet pattern because we don't know about it long-term. So even the studies that they are quoting is saying like, yeah, this could potentially be good for you, but we don't know that long term. So just saying that this is the way to do it and anything that tells you that specifically this is a healthy way to do it or this is the specific way to do it is considered a diet. And I know I keep referencing the dietary guidelines, but it's a body of research with a variety of different ways that people can eat with suggestions of what would be considered balanced. But again, ultimately, if you focus on your hunger and fullness cues and get back to that, eventually your body will re-regulate and you'll be able to feed it all the nourishing things that it's telling you at once. So thank you for joining me today. Remember to listen to your body and that your worth is not defined by your weight, but it's based on all the awesome things that you do. Stay fierce and until next time, you can chew on that.